Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is David Bianco. Today on our Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion, we're going to be going back into 2022 and trying to figure out what was the best album of the year. I think I've got one that I pretty well nailed down. I'm not going to go through an exhaustive list because I think this one's good enough to just be focused on on its own. And that's coming up next here at the Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion. Well, 2022 is almost gone, so it's a reflection time as always at the end of the year. Well, when I've looked back at this year, it's been a, a very mixed year for me with starting a YouTube channel and doing a lot of videos and reflections on new releases, many of them reissues. And uh, looking at the new releases that have come out, uh, which were by artists who were either brand new or were following on on a career. Uh, and again, I don't always have the widest of range of music that I listen to. So understand that that's part of my perspective. But for me, this year came down to a decision. About mid-year, I made a video on what I thought the best uh, album of the year was at that point. Uh, and I gave a snippet of that in a video that I did. And uh, I then was going to prepare a full-length video on it and decided to wait. And as it turned out, um, I'm going back to that video because at the end of the day, it's the same album mid-year that I thought was best, which is now at the end of the year, still the album that I think is best for 2022. And that is... Tears for Fears, The Tipping Point. So Tears for Fears had been absent for a while from the scene, uh, 17 years as I recall, and uh, so they had to come back with something. Now, I had seen Tears for Fears in July of 2017 with Hall and & Oates and Alan Stone here in Dallas. Um, later that month, um, Roland's, uh, one of the two band members, Kurt and Roland, Roland's wife, passed away. Uh, we had previously had tickets to their concert a few years prior, and it was canceled due to her health issues. So uh, definitely it was a tough time. Uh, they were on a quite a wild tour at that point, um, and she passed away uh, actually when he was in Los Angeles toward the end of July on tour still. But it was a great concert, and, um, and this album obviously is one that now had come in 2022 in February. And uh, it was an album that I bought and first listened to, and I thought, boy, that, that, that sounds different. That's, that's not songs from the big chair. Uh, it's not uh, sowing the seeds of love. It's not the hurting. It's very, very different. And I listened to it and listened to it, and... About the time uh, I had listened to it three or four times, I was heading on a trip to Europe, and on that flight, they had this album featured and also an interview with Roland and Kurt, whereby they explained this album and how it came together. And it was done a lot during the COVID pandemic, and they would do a lot of the work remotely and trade uh, files and trade songs and do uh, Zooms together to practice and things of that nature uh, to put this album together. And so it has a lot of mood to it, a lot of uh, different type of interpretations. It starts off with a, uh, an acoustic uh, guitar at the very first track, which is kind of uh, throws you off. It's kind of like not what you expect from them because they're more keyboard oriented type music in general. So right out of the box, you know, hmm, there's something, something different here. And so... After listening to that interview and really reflecting on it and then listening to the music, a lot of things came together for me. And ironically, talking to a few other people I know, when they had first heard the album, they at first didn't have the best first impression either. So it's an album that maybe has to grow on you a little bit, but I think you see the craftsman and the workmanship that's here, and it really does espouse a matured Tears for Fears. Um, an older, wiser tears for fears, dare I say. And again, life's experiences bring you that. 
Um, the good news is I just read that uh, Roland has remarried here in 2022. So, you know, getting his life uh, back on a second chapter, so to speak, in that regard. Uh, the success of this album, it got to number two in the UK, number eight in the United States. Um, and it really does, in fact, bring a lot of depth and a lot of serious thinking. The whole idea of the tipping point, when you think about it, there's so many things in today's world, uh, no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, uh, no matter where you live in the world, I think many times we feel like we're at that tipping point in our lives for a variety of reasons. And I think, in fact, that this album really is bringing that to the fore. The pandemic was obviously a very large element of tipping points in our lives. And now that we're out of that for the most part, and now starting to live our lives, things have changed and we have new tipping points. And I think it's really a reflection of that. And the songs that are on here are really a basis of understanding that life has so many twists and turns. And I think the depth of that understanding and the way they have been able to compartmentalize some of these ideas into the songs that they have built really is a construct that makes you reflect. And I think that's an important thing to do. It's not something that brings you down. There's some very up tunes here, uh, which really builds you up as well. So, but it is in fact something that makes one listen to and reflect and enjoy the melodic change that Tears for Fears has brought to the table. And I think that's really the interesting thing about this album. It was kind of tumultuous to put together for them, given uh, the difficulties of getting in a studio and doing the normal uh, type of work that they did. And so it was a challenge. And, and the thing about it, what really makes this album a real gem to me is it isn't formulaic. You can't sit down and say, oh, that, that sounds like songs from the big chair. That sounds like sowing the seeds of love. Uh, it's not like another effort. It's really some cohesive elements put together, given the time frame they were built, and having a bigger message. And they were in some ways a bit experimental, not in the sense that they were in sowing the seeds of love, because you could tell there they were trying to blend in and move a little bit into almost some of the Beatles type of, of sounds in that album, which was again a phase. All bands go through phases. And this one represents a phase that was really driven by a total change in human behavior, a total change in the lives of human beings. And I think that's what makes it so interesting. There's just a maturity and a depth there, a variety of sounds and a variety of images that we see in the videos. So what is an album of the year? Well, it depends on who you are. It depends on what you like, and it depends on what struck you, what impacted you. And for me, this album had the biggest impact of 2022. The perspective that I gained in, in watching the uh, documentary that was done on the making of this album and looking more closely at the lyrics and thinking about the timing, uh, it really all started to come together. And once it did, uh, it moved from just a listening experience of, hmm, that doesn't sound like Tears for Fears that I'm used to, to being a message being something larger than just songs on two sides of an LP. Uh, it became something that delivered some answers, delivered some perspective, and delivered some hope. And I think for me, maybe that's what I needed in 2022. As I said, I looked at this album mid-year and thought it was the best. And when it all was said and done, I hadn't changed my mind by the time we got here to nearly Christmas of 2022. And so give this album a shot. You can see the videos there. They're also online, of course, on YouTube in full form. Uh, and, you know, maybe pick up on some of the reflections that are there. Again, maybe it's a little bit of a heady album in certain ways, but sometimes we need that reflection. So for now, as always, I want to thank you for spending time with me. And I wish you all very happy holidays here in late December of 2022. 
And if you would, take the time to subscribe. And if you like the video, thumbs up. And comments are always welcome. I always try to reply to your comments and acknowledge the fact that you've taken the time. So for now, hoping you all have a great holiday season. This is David Bianco at the Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion. Take care, everybody.